Hello, my name is Matthew Hall, and my mentor was Jacqueline Skillinger, and I'm uh, currently Zooming in from South Korea. I chose to explore this particular topic because I am personally interested in particle physics and how particles interact on a subatomic level. And upon researching the topic, I embarked upon the concept of dark matter, and this intrigued me leading into this topic. So, advancements and challenges in dark matter detection, a review of the xenon NT experiment. First off, for the table of contents, I'll go through the introduction, uh, talk about direct detection of WIMPs, uh, the infrastructure of the experiment, how to eliminate noise in such experiments, data anal and analysis of, current, of the xenon NT experiment, and end with the conclusion. So, Dark matter. What is dark matter? Dark matter is a theoretical, non-luminous, and non-baryonic form of matter permeating galaxies, and it's only confirmed, factually confirmed, to interact with the gravitational force with certainty. So there have been data that suggests that they also interact with weak nuclear force, but it lacks, lacks empirical uh, sufficient data. And a highly plausible candidate for dark matter are a group of particles known as WIMPs, weakly interacting massive particles. And these are a group of observed yet hypothetical particles that are predicted to interact with only the gravitational and the weak nuclear force. And they are considered to be a compelling candidate for dark matter, mainly because mainly due to their quantity. Uh, the sheer quantity of WIMPs suggests that they can be a candidate of dark matter to the extent that they affect get, uh, galaxies and galaxy rotations. So the supersymmetric implications of dark matter, uh, the theory of supersymmetry suggests that the standard model of particle physics is incomplete, and this is one hypothesized expansion. According to the framework, the particles in the standard model have associated super partners, and that the standard model is incomplete. And so let's say for quarks, we have S quarks, Leptons, we have S leptons, and these are the super partners of the elementary particles that we have in our current standard model. And the consensus is that these S quarks, S leptons, and super partners are viable candidates for dark matter and for WIMPs. And so if we are able to identify WIMPs and confirm that they are dark matter, then we it's highly likely that uh, the elementary particles in standard in the standard model would be extended, and the model would be expanded to include these super partners. So the direct detection of WIMPs. Before the xenon NT experiment, there have been precedents, of course. So the super cryogenic dark matter stretch experiment, super CDMS, used its target material of germanium and silicon, and they identified the crystal lattice vibrations and ionized signals that happened when particles collided with their target material. And the Luke Zeppelin experiment, large underground xenon experiment, more directly coincides with the xenon NT because it also uses liquid xenon as its target material. In terms of xenon NT, it uses concentrated proportions of liquid xenon to detect skin tillation signals produced from WIMP collisions with the xenon atomic nuclei. Whatever that means, uh, we'll explore later. So the infrastructure and detection methodology. A crucial implement of the xenon NT experiment would be the dual phase time projection chamber, which I'll refer to as the TPC. The TPC has a polytetrafluoroethylene frame for high reflectivity so that it can better detect uh, light, and a layer of gaseous xenon above the liquid xenon concentration. It have ultra sensitive photomultiplier tubes installed for the prompt detection of skin tillation signals. And it also maintains a high radiological purity to discourage any irrelevant background noise that may cause from either radioactive decay or pure radiation produced from these materials. And this TPC helps better identify and categorize uh, situations if WIMPs do actually collide with xenon atomic nuclei. So the detection methodology, once WIMP xenon, WIMPs collide with xenon atomic nuclei, uh, energy and momentum is created during these collisions, which would result in the production of photons. Since as xenon, uh, as wind particles come in and they collide with the atoms, this would create energy and momentum. And this uh, produces two main scintillation signals. The prompt scintillation signal S1 is produced immediately after the collision, 
during the excitation of xenon atomic xenon atoms and their electrons. And the secondary scintillation signal is produced with the ionization of the xenon atoms uh, later on. So the delay time between S1 and then how much it, time, it takes time for S2 to come, that time delay can be used to reconstruct the 3D position of like where exactly th the collision happened within the detector and the ratio of the intensity of the S1 and S2 signals can be utilized to see what particular type of collision has happened, whether it is actually a WIMP xenon collision. And another important aspect of this, this experiment would be to eliminate noise and to extract only the signals that relate to WIMP and uh, xenon atom collisions. So different sources of noise include cosmic rays, since cosmic ray muons collide, may collide with xenon nuclei and produce high energy, similar to how the cloud chamber functions, and the nuclear recoil uh, pertaining to the neutron scattering in cases of neutron neutrino interactions can imitate WIMP collisions and also the elastic scattering of solar neutrinos and radiogenic neutrons produce uh, an extremely high concentration of free neutrons and that can also emulate WIMP collisions and also electronic recoil through X-ray photons introduced by photoelectric interactions and the beta decay of tritium, radon, and lead isotopes can produce electronic recoil signals that scientists may confuse for WIMP collisions. To eliminate such a uh, background noise, there have been a lot of methods. First, just the pure use of liquid xenon, which is a non-radioactive element, to reduce internal radiation of the target material. And muon veto, a stainless steel cylindrical tank containing deionized water to keep away external neutrons and gamma radiations. This also tags cosmic uh, ray muon tracks in order to exclude them from the experimental data. And the neutron veto system, a 33 cubic meter volume of water with added GD sulfate to thermalize neutrons and capture and tag them to exclude them from uh, usable data. So the actual data and, and analysis, uh, the most significant, statistically significant and relevant data would be would, was produced in July 28th, 2023 by professors Elena Aprili and her colleagues at the Gran Sasso National Lab laboratory of Italy, so, and while they failed to detect any neutron uh, recall signals that were confirmed to be WIMP collisions, uh, in terms of the sensitivity of the detector, there have been a lot of different uh, experimental data. So first, the upper limit of the detected WIMP nucleon cross-section was narrowed to a 2.58 times 10 to the negative 47 square centimeters for a WIMP mass of 28 giga electron volts per C squared at 90% confidence level. And also, the total electronic recoil background level uh, was reduced to 15.8 plus margin of error of 1.3 events per ton year in kilo electron volts, which is a five times reduction in rate compared to the previous experiment of Xenon 1T in 2018. So the analysis of the data is the decrease in the WIMP nuclear and cross-section upper limit uh, signifies the enhanced sensitivity and background reduction of the detector since it shows how the experimental parameters of the detector have become more stringent compared to Xenon 1T and it's capable of detecting weaker signals. And the electronic recoil rejection rate promises enhancements to future experiments for improved accuracy and sensitivity and it also just purely suggests that the uh, current detector and technology is way more sensitive since it can better exclude electronic recoil background noise. So in conclusion, uh, the, the detection methodology and the detection infrastructure of the Xenon NT experiment necessitates the dual phase TPC plus an increased Xenon volume, volume compared to previous Xenon experiments and an enhanced highly enhanced sensitivity and accuracy with its uh, improved veto systems. And also further improvements uh, to the detector that can be made would be to use a greater number of quantitative data for the interaction signals and to use a greater volume of liquid and gaseous xenon because as stated above, there weren't neutron signals that were confirmed to be WIMP new, WIMP collisions. However, if a greater number of data were used and a greater volume of xenon was used, there could be a statistical correlation that can be found. Thank you for listening.